Here's your wrestling news for July 5th, 2021. And your headlines for today include, What did WWE management inform Samoa Joe about main roster call-up? Finn Balor drops interesting Bullet Club video. Kenny Omega fires back at fans for copying WWE Superstar. Brian Cage legit unhappy about AEW Fighter Fest's poster snub. Why WWE wanted Moose on main roster. AEW star is tired of fans sending unsolicited photos to her DMs. John Morrison trolls Ricochet. Ricochet strongly reacts. AEW star might not return after doing very well in career outside of wrestling. A big fight broke out. Former WWE referee recollects WWE wrestlers brawling with real fighters. Tucker kills WWE money in the bank rumor and more. We are kicking off today with Samoa Joe, who returned to NXT last month, marking his first appearance on the Gold Brand since January 2017. Initially debuting in WWE on NXT in 2015, Joe was instantly impressive, becoming a two-time NXT champion before his call-up. Now fans can find him as William Regal's enforcer, and during an out-of-character podcast appearance, Joe confirmed the rumor that, like Kevin Owens, he was told not to expect to be called up to the main roster ever in his career. He added, People think I get hurt when I hear that, but I've experienced this my entire career everywhere I've gone. Everywhere. Joe gave some examples of people not having faith in him, saying that Dutch Mantel didn't believe in him when he started in TNA. I remember I'm going to walk out for my match on Impact, my very first match, and Mantel looks me up and down and goes, well son, you only get one chance to make a first impression. Doesn't look like you're about to make a good one. All right, go out there and get him, kid. I had known Dutch for a little bit, so I'm dying laughing as I walk through the curtain. So being doubted walking through the door is absolutely, I'm numb to it. WWE's higher-ups may not have expected much from Joe, but he more than delivered upon joining the gold brand in 2015. The irony of this is that most NXT superstars probably dread being called up, as many have gone underutilized by Vince McMahon, and for now, Joe is perfectly happy in NXT as he continues to work towards an in-ring return. Finn Balor hasn't been seen in NXT since losing the NXT title to Karrion Cross, and as rumors persist of a return to the main roster, The Prince is having fun on social media. On Twitter, Balor shared a video of a fan wearing a Bullet Club shirt and made sure that viewers saw the logo of the infamous group. A few years ago, it was quite common to see Bullet Club shirts out in the wild, but they're not as popular anymore. Balor's short video certainly got a huge reaction from fans, and with Balor not the only Bullet Club alum in WWE, who knows if a reunion could happen on Raw or SmackDown. If Balor does rejoin the main roster this year, he probably won't come alone, as Karrion Cross, Bronson Reed, and others have all had tryouts as of late, and with Balor looking more than ready to go again, his return to the main roster could be a highlight of 2021, especially if he has the club by his side. AEW news next as AEW World Champion Kenny Omega recently appeared with a new look, which reminded fans of a certain King of Kings. Sporting a long handlebar mustache, many considered Omega's new look as another reference to WWE and Triple H circa 2006, but that isn't the case. When a fan said that Omega's new look has quote, Harley Race energy, Omega said that's exactly where he got his inspiration from and that the game never crossed his mind. We'll have to see how long the cleaner keeps this new look around, which is in tribute to one of the toughest men to ever grace the squared circle. Omega is expected to headline AEW Fighter Fest, which will air on the 14th and 21st of July, but not every match is getting a ton of focus. Although Brian Cage and Ricky Starks will face for the FTW title at the show, you wouldn't know it by looking at the poster, which doesn't feature either man. On Twitter, Cage lashed out at the promotional material, saying that despite the show being in Starks' hometown and Austin being a city very close to his wrestling career, that they can't get on the poster. Cage also used the hashtag WrestleCircus, referencing the promotion he once worked for in Austin, and among other great performances, once faced Tessa Blanchard in a fantastic intergender match. Given that Cage is turning face, it's out of character for him to be mad about this poster, as it seems the machine is genuinely mad about being snubbed.
For the past few years, WWE have been signing up as much talent as they can, with Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, and Robert Roode all coming from Impact Wrestling. One major name from Impact that WWE hasn't signed is Moose, but that's not for lack of trying. Fightful Select reports that WWE was trying to sign Moose, and the plan was for the former NFL star to head straight to the main roster upon joining. WWE never made an offer, but the interest was there, and in response, Impact made a huge play to re-sign him. In June, Moose revealed that his contract with Impact was ending, but he's since inked a new multi-year deal with the company. Moose's new contract reportedly has a substantial increase from his previous arrangement with the company, and though he's been challenging Impact World Champion Kenny Omega lately, that would never have happened had WWE got their way. As the second-ever AEW Women's Champion, Nyla Rose is a major success in wrestling and has a ton of fans supporting her, but ultimately, some people have taken things a step too far. On Twitter, Rose fired off a tweet about fans who take it too far, sending unsolicited pictures of their genitals to her account. She said, Guys, I really can't believe that we still have to have this discussion, but I promise you there is nothing cute about unwanted D pics. I'm going to start a social media where you need to attach your bank account to sign up, and if you do this bullshit, you get charged real money. This is something Rose has spoken about in the past, but it seems she's having to make herself clear to fans who didn't get the message the first time. The native beast likes to have fun on social media, recently teasing opening an OnlyFans account, but this week was no joke, and we can only hope that the people sending these pics cut it out immediately. Back to WWE and tonight, Ricochet and John Morrison are set to face off in a rematch after last week's encounter ended in a double countout. It's no secret that Ricochet has been a wrestling fan for years and even met Morrison years before he signed with WWE, something that Johnny Drip Drip hasn't forgotten. On Twitter, Morrison shared a photo of him and a younger Ricochet complete with Ricochet sporting long hair and wished his biggest fan a happy 4th of July. Following up with a video promo, Morrison used plenty of water puns, calling himself Johnny Drip Drop and the Flood Stud, which got a response from Ricochet himself. The former US champion warned Morrison to watch his mouth when talking about a Ricochet, saying that a Ricochet is liable to hit anything nearby, including Morrison, The Miz, or anyone in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Both men are confirmed for the men's ladder match, and a victory tonight will give one of them a ton of momentum heading into July 18th. More from AEW next, as the company has a huge roster, which means that not everyone gets screen time every single week. Fans haven't seen Melanie Cruz since the Nightmare Collective disbanded, making her last AEW match a victory over Red Velvet during an August 2020 AEW Dark. Now fans may not see Mel again, as Fightful reports that her career outside of wrestling is doing very well, though it's not noted what her day job is when she's not in the ring. It's also reported that Mel isn't being factored into any imminent creative plans, and though the company could bring her back to TV soon, the wrestler is doing pretty well for herself without having to take a single bump. If you've been a wrestling fan long enough, you'll have seen plenty of multi-man brawls on screen, but these incidents also happen out of the ring too. In 2005, WWE stayed at the same hotel as a group of kickboxers in Manchester, England, and within minutes of WWE's bus arriving in the early hours of the morning, a fight broke out between the two sides. Speaking to James Romero of Wrestling Shoot Interviews, former WWE ref Mike Chioda discussed the brawl, saying, Everybody was running off the bus, we were all fighting, dudes just throwing around, and it was a good old time there. It was Batista in that brawl, Benoit was in that brawl, everybody, everybody was just all over the place because it was a good amount of guys. Despite the pleas of John Laurinaitis for the wrestlers to stop, all hell broke loose and said that many people in the brawl were tired, drunk, and fired up. Amazingly, no one got fined after the brawl, and when Bruce Prichard discussed the brawl last year, he said police were there when the fight broke out and nobody was arrested. Kyoto insisted that the superstars who fought were just defending themselves, and it goes to show that some of the most exciting action in WWE doesn't happen on screen. And we're ending with WWE, who made the shocking decision last year for Otis to win Money in the Bank, and fans speculated on when he'd cash in. One popular theory is that Otis, who was in heavy machinery, would cash in on the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, but that didn't happen, as Tucker turned on Otis at Hell in a Cell, causing him to lose the briefcase to The Miz. 
Speaking to the OTR show recently, Tucker revealed that WWE never had plans for a tag team briefcase cash-in. He explained, Vince doesn't feel like the tag division can really draw money. At least, that seems to be the way they're booked. Even when they have a super emotional story, they might get 20 minutes at the most. The money in the bank is like one of the biggest things in the company. It's one of the biggest prop gimmicks that there is. It's a ticket to a world title. It would be nice to think that they'd use it for us to win the tag team championships, but I don't think that was the plan. And if it was, it never got there. Instead of cashing in with Otis, Tucker was released on April 15th this year, leaving WWE without any titles, and despite what some fans believed, a tag title briefcase cash-in was never even considered. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.